Hooray! I just got my maxed out 14 inch MacBook Pro with the M1 Max chip in it. And boo! Now I'm broke as a joke because I dropped the big bucks. But the good news is in this video, I give you a peek at its performance. Three, two, one. Hi and welcome or welcome back to DIY Film with Merle Becker, the channel where I help you make better videos. All right, as you probably know, Apple makes their own computer chips now. They used to use the Intel chips and before that the PowerPC chips, but as of November 2020, now they use their own M1 chip, which they claim has better performance, including in the MacBook Air, faster launching apps, faster wake up, 3.5 times faster CPU, five times faster graphics performance, better battery life, and the list goes on. One downside with the M1 chip is now you can't upgrade the RAM by yourself because it's built into the chip, but that's okay by me. Also, we're not sure if this is gonna be the case with the new desktops coming out. All right, so today I'm gonna to go through my new MacBook Pro, the 14 inch with the M1 Max chip, and I'm gonna talk about what I like about it as a filmmaker. Because as you know, my focus on this channel is mainly filmmaking and some photography. So I wanted to pick three things that are important to filmmakers and photographers and look at the M1 Max chip through that lens, no pun intended. All right, so in this video, I'll be comparing it to my previous laptop, a 2018 13 inch MacBook Air with an Intel chip. I know, I know the two are worlds apart, but I wanted to illustrate performance differences. And the 2018 MacBook Air with the Intel chip is what I've got. And for reference, I work mostly in Adobe Creative Cloud applications, and the external drives I'm using for this video are 5 gig Western Digital My Passport drives with a USB-C connection. My files are mostly 4K MPEG-4s with an HD color profile, and they have an average duration of around 15 minutes per clip. And as far as my Premiere projects go, my project isn't a huge one. In general, I keep my projects relatively small. I create a fresh one every 15 or so YouTube videos. All right, so here are the specs of my old MacBook Air. It's a 13 inch with a 128 gig hard drive. It has a 1.6 gigahertz dual core Intel Core i5 processor and 16 gigs of RAM. This MacBook Air was used primarily for editing on the go and the occasional multitasking with other Adobe programs. My main issues with it were as follows. One, slow playback in Adobe Premiere. Although I usually edit on my desktop, I'm occasionally working on the go on my laptop. And on my 2018 MacBook Air, smooth 4K playback in Premiere wasn't possible in full resolution. And at half or even a quarter resolution, it wasn't ideal, making it, for the most part, not a great option for editing on the go. My second filmmaker-related concern that I'll be using for this video is two, slow multitasking. When I edit, I use Premiere, Photoshop, and Media Encoder simultaneously. And my MacBook Air was limping along when I had more than one program open. Or I should say it was often not really capable of having two programs open, especially when I was doing heavy lifting in one. So for example, here's me opening Photoshop while I'm exporting a video in Premiere. And here's Photoshop um, not opening. I'll speed this up to spare you the pain. That whole thing took around five minutes and it still didn't open. Yeah. So lastly, three, slow exports. I do a lot of revising with my work and I'm often exporting the same video multiple times. And a lot of times I'm working against the clock when exporting. And sometimes it takes close to an hour to export on the MacBook Air. And waiting an hour to export a 10 minute video doesn't cut it for me. That was sometimes longer than the battery lasted. So yeah, it was time for an upgrade. All right, so the MacBook Pro M1 Max. As you probably know, the price difference between the MacBook Air with the Intel chip and the new maxed out MacBook Pro with the M1 Max chip is a lot. Back in December of 2018, I paid around $1,404, including tax for my MacBook Air. That was maybe with a promo code, I can't remember. 
And for reference, my MacBook Pro with the M1 Max chip was built with the following specs. It's a 14 inch with a 512 gig hard drive. As mentioned, I work mostly on external drives. It has an M1 Max chip with a 10 core CPU, 32 core GPU, and 16 core neural engine. And it has 64 gigs of RAM which at the time I ordered it were the best options available, which brought me to a whopping total of $3,499, including tax. So around two grand more than my MacBook Air. And also just FYI, I ordered it from Apple in the beginning of December, 2021, and I had to wait until the end of January, 2022 to receive it. So if you're looking to get your hands on an M1 Max chip MacBook Pro, you might have a wait. All right, so let's do the road test. First up, here was the Premiere playback on my MacBook Air. As demonstrated, I've got a 10 minute sequence here with four layers of video. Here's the full res playback, half res, and quarter res. Pretty choppy. And here's the same sequence on the same drive played back on the new MacBook Pro. So the first time I played this down, I had a couple of dropped frames. And then when I played it down again, it looked like maybe there were less. And then I did half res and I couldn't really tell a difference between that and full res with regards to dropped frames and quarter res, not much of a difference either. So at full res, it looked like it was playing as smoothly as half or quarter res. Overall, a huge improvement. All in all, I'd say mission accomplished. I really didn't notice the dropped frames unless I was really looking for them. Next up, let's check out the multitasking. As demonstrated, here's that screen cap of the MacBook Air failing miserably trying to open Photoshop while exporting a video in Premiere. And here's the same exact task on the MacBook Pro with the M1 Max chip. Doing it with its eyes closed and time to spare. And for good measure, let's open Media Encoder as well. And just for fun, let's fire up After Effects to see what happens. I'd say the multitasking issue was properly addressed. And lastly, we have a little export test. Here's that four layer video sequence on my MacBook Air ready to export. And there's my time estimate, as mentioned, around an hour, not acceptable. And here's the same sequence set up for export on the new MacBook Pro with the M1 Max chip. And the time difference is, well, what you might expect. Exactly what I needed. All in all, as you might have predicted, the new MacBook Pro more than solves the three filmmaker issues I had with my old MacBook Air. This is exactly what one would expect, but sometimes it's just nice to see the actual programs running on a new computer to get an idea of how that configuration will work out for you. And I should note that with the new maxed out MacBook Pro, there's room for me to grow as I move into 8K video at some point down the road. Also, let's talk quickly about the other things I like. I'm more than happy with the battery life, which far outperforms the MacBook Air when I'm editing. The 14 inch liquid retina XDR display is beautiful. And I don't mind the notch at the top for the camera. Also, I love having the three Thunderbolt 4 ports and an HDMI port. And I really love having the SD card slot there for my camera cards. And lastly, I don't mind the extra size and weight. It's fine. All in all, it was the right decision for me. And if you're a filmmaker looking to future-proof your laptop, it may be the right choice for you. Let me know in the comments if you've been considering an M1 Max chip MacBook or if you have any other questions about it. Or let me know if you've already taken the plunge and how it's working out for you. And as always, if you found any of this helpful, please give the video a thumbs up, subscribe and hit the bell so you know when the next one is posted. And I will catch you next time.